Hey everyone, I already did a video or so covering this particular topic, but you know what? Chris Sully in this particular uh, contribution, this article from the National Post, did a bang up job of laying out some of the pushback and points that definitely need to be said in terms of the federal liberals under Justin Trudeau and their $600 media bailout and how that's all unfolding and playing out. Headline of the National Post, Chris Sully. Liberals' media bailout puts foxes in charge of the chickens. If the heritage minister had explicitly set out to bolster the notion that Canadian media are bought and paid for by the Liberals, he could have done no better. It's being reported on May 22, 2019. It is difficult to know where to begin to deplore the process by which the federal government will decide which media organizations to subsidize and which not to. So let's start with Unifor's involvement. Unifor, you may ask. The flamboyant anti-conservative labor union? Indeed, the mega union representing 315,000 workers across the country, including a large percentage of Anglophone Canadian journalists at legacy media outlets and also auto workers, because that totally makes sense, will nominate one of eight people to an independent panel of experts. The panel will decide the criteria for divvying up tax breaks, adding up to some six hundred million dollars in public funding yeah public funding yeah that's you the tax serve the wage slaves in this country you're the one that's being forced to prop up these failing media institutions and dinosaurs who are completely out of touch with reality and not representative of properly informing or educating the people which is basically their job or holding power to account which once again they've been shown to be complete and abstract failures in that regard as well and why because they're basically part and parcel of the ruling establishment. So it's in their own best interest to keep and maintain it. It is questionable of the government to ask any journalist union to weigh in on this. The Federation Nationale des Communications, FNC, which counts many Francophone journalists among its members, also gets a vote. After all, the idea here is supposed to be to help media organizations adapt to new market conditions. And these unions represent people who have every interest in models to retirement. Yeah, actually, that's the secondary. Well, actually, it's a very important aspect to this. Is even the six hundred million dollars? All these attempts to prop up these failing media establishment or organizations. It, it could prove to be a complete. I mean, that's the thing with the liberals or leftists or collectivists. The people that you know, the money's not coming out of their pocket. They're taken from you, 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 you. Where's the incentive for them to do the right thing and make sure they're doing the right thing? Well, it's not because it's not like it's not come from them. It's not come from their bottom line or their wallets or pocketbooks or purses. So, like I say, the incentive is already wrong. But think about it. If they do prop these media organizations, what kind of effect that'll have on not just the discourse in this country because you see what they're trying to promote, the kind of division that they're trying to promote, what it might not ultimately end up being a complete waste and squander of that six hundred million dollars because you know, these these media organizations you're not going to be able to keep them functioning off a business model from the last century they have to adopt and evolve or get out of the media business but unifor is the union that turned markedly partisan during the 2015 election campaign fundingo filled attack ads against stephen harper's conservatives and mortifying many journalist members whose credibility depends on their perceived political independence more recently, Unifor's executives have collectively styled themselves Andrew Shear's worst nightmare, eliciting more futile pleas from journalists to shut up. Well, those were the days. Now the government that benefited from Unifor's partisan largesse has asked it for help deciding who's a proper journalist and what's a proper news outlet, and thus worthy of government largesse. If Heritage Minister Pablo Rodriguez had explicitly set out to bolster the notion that Canadian media are bought and paid for by the Liberal Party of Canada, he could have done no better. So who else? The Quebec Community Newspaper Association, the Association de la Presse Francophone, which represents French language publications outside Quebec, and the National Ethnic Press and Media Council get relatively inoffensive votes. But then there's News Media Canada. Whereas Unifor dubiously claims to represent the interests of journalists at legacy media outlets, News Media Canada most definitely represents the interests of those outlets' publishers and has lobbied the feds fulsomely on their behalf. Having successfully obtained a taxpayer bailout for the struggling companies, 
They now get to decide the terms. Nice. And then there's the Canadian Association of Journalists, CAJ, and the Fédération Professionnelle de Journalistes de Quebec, FPJQ, which ostensibly exist to promote excellence in journalism and therefore ought to be ashamed to go anywhere near this farce. But the latter has long flirted with pernicious views about journalistic independence. In 2011, University Laval professor Dominique Payette released a report full of bad ideas to bolster journalism in the age of digital disruption. They included restricting government advertising to outlets that were members of the Quebec Press Council and, most notably, certifying professional journalists and offering them privileged access to government information and sources. So basically, <laughs> I'll post a link to this excellent article in the description of this video below. And thanks for doing this, Chris Sully. Because the Canadian people definitely need to hear this kind of stuff. But yeah, I mean, basically what you're hearing today is, like I say, big media corporations and big government under the federal Trudeau liberals are now coming together to once again maintain their ability to hold sway and influence and dictate and determine the kind of information that people receive. The whole point of journalism, once again, is to hold power to account and be adversarial to those who claim to be your authority. As we're seeing today, based on all the precedent that's coming to light as a consequence of what's happening is, no, they're actually all coming together to join forces and deny you as the Canadian, as a taxpayer, the ability to hear alternative, differing, or counter-narratives from people such as myself. They want to prop up the established media while simultaneously trying to shut down and silence those in the alternative media or those who are challenging the political orthodoxy or the ideological underpinnings that represent those in the establishment or the status quo. Once again, folks, it's up to each and every one of us to not just push back against this, but to support those who are challenging the status quo or the establishment. Because as you're seeing, they have all the power, all the money, and all the influence. Sure, we've got the ideas, but those ideas need to be get out there and be propagated to the masses. And the only way that can happen is by you helping in some way. Whether that's financially or just by liking, sharing, subscribing, and not voting in or supporting these people that are trying to silence voices such as myself. It's Canadian Libertarian, and I love liberty.